Across many of the front pages this morning, the absolutely shocking death of two-year-old Awad Ishak from Rochdale, who died from exposure to mould, continued exposure to that in his home. Well, Dr Amir joins me now. Um, when I first saw the story, I actually didn't believe that it was happening in this country. This is horrendous, isn't it? Good morning, Lorraine. Yes, yeah, it's absolutely horrendous. And unfortunately, it's not a unique situation for people to be in. Awab Isaac, he was just 20 days short of his two, second birthday. Uh, he died in 2020. The coroner explained yesterday his findings that he died from l a lung condition due to chronic exposure to mould. Uh, and actually, Lorraine, you know, I've seen patients here in Bradford who come and see me and complain about mould in their homes. Uh, and I'm often writing letters to help support them get the help that they need. So that is something people can do if they are struggling. Now, mould is a type of fungus uh, and it grows in, in warm, damp conditions. It shouldn't be in anyone's home. It really shouldn't be there at all. Uh, it can be round circles of black, green or grey. And if you're not sure whether there is mould growing in your home. If you've got something that looks like mould, go and have a smell of it. If it smells earthy or dusty, it could be mould. Draw a ring around it. And if it's growing outside of that ring, that suggests it is mould. And you can even drop a little bit of bleach in the middle of it. And if that discolours it, that probably is mould as well. And you need to get help because mould gives off spores and these spores can lodge themselves in your lungs. For a lot of people, it can cause things like irritation of the eyes, the, the congestion of the nose. But for people with asthma, chronic lung conditions, it can be devastatingly serious, as we saw in the case here. And with Grenville step still, it's Grenfell still etched in our memories. You know, we have to ask our questions because the family did alert the Housing Association to this uh, and they feel and, and, you know, it's a question we have to ask. Was their ethnicity a reason why people didn't didn't act? That was something certainly with Grenfell. Is it the case with uh, Awab as well? It's, it's really sad, really important uh, if you've got mould that you act on it now and don't stop until something is done. No, exactly. That's horrific. It really is. But what you said there is really interesting. I mean, that you, as a as a GP, you can actually help. You know, you can write to the authorities and say you have to do something about this. Is that poor result, two years old, for goodness sake? Yeah, yeah. And it, it is something that I, I have done before and I will continue to do. You know, when people come and see me, often I've gone to people's homes to see uh, people who are housebound and they're ill. And I notice mould and I talk to them about that as well and give them letters. Uh, the letters are not a guarantee that they'll do something, but it adds a little bit of weight yeah. behind what, what, what you might already be doing. So if you're really struggling, really speak to a healthcare professional. We'll do our best to help. Oh, it's horrendous. I mean, that should never happen again. That's absolutely yeah. outrageous. Um, moving on to, well, not unrelated, I guess, you know, it is cold and flu season, people are getting sick, and news this morning of a, they're calling it a triple-demic, I mean, what is that and how worried should we be? Yeah, I think this is a headline grabbing right, word, okay. triple demic, really, you know, so so it's always good to be informed. It's never good to panic. You know, we know there's COVID still around. There's vaccines out there that prevent serious illness. Flu is, is coming. We're coming into flu season. There's a very effective flu vaccine that people who are eligible can can go and get. The third virus they're talking about that we're seeing an increase in is a, is a common winter virus. It's called respiratory syncytial virus or RSV. In adults, it generally gives people cold-like symptoms, unless you have a weakened immune system, it can be serious. It's more uh, symptomatic and more dangerous in children under the age of two, uh, where it can make them unwell right. and it can cause breathing difficulties and feeding difficulties. But like I say, it's a common virus. The kind of signs you need to look out for in these children, if, you're, if they're struggling to feed through a bottle because their nose is blocked, if they've got breathing, uh, using all their muscles in their neck and right. chest to breathe, or if their nas nose are flaring in and out, it's called nasal flare. If you're struggling with breathing and you're, you're, you know, you take your child to see a doctor immediately. Don't Absolutely. wait at home. No, exactly. And you know what? Positive news for people um, who might be worried that they have cancer symptoms. There's going to be a fast track, we understand. 
So this is news that's out today, Lorraine. I think the devil is in the detail, but mm. the NHS have announced that GPs from the end of this month will be able to access scans like MRI, CTs, uh, ultrasounds if we suspect a patient has cancer. Currently, if I suspect someone has cancer, I refer them down a pathway called the two-week wait, where they'll see a specialist and have a scan or a test done to see whether their symptoms are cancer or not. Uh, but this might fast track me my allowance into scans. I can already do that, to be honest with you, Lorraine. I'm not sure how big news this is. And right. scans are one thing, but staff is the other thing we've got to be mindful of. Of course, we've got to we've got to have the people to do that. It's all very well saying we are going to, but you have to have the staff to do it. You're right. Finally, um, bed sheets. I don't know how often you you change yours a lot. I would imagine, and um, could be the answer though to a better night's sleep. And we all know that feeling of going into freshly laundered sheets. It's bliss, isn't it? Yes, this is a new study that shows that actually changing your sheets regularly improves your quality of sleep. And the same study suggests that a third of Brits, Lorraine, prepare yourself for this only change their bed sheets once a year, which is what? pretty grim. Yes, once a year. And you've got to remember that we shed skin. We shed about four kilos of skin a year. And when we do that in bed, we've got bed bugs that feed on the skin. They can then um, lay droppings and the droppings can set off allergies like asthma and eczema. So wash your bed sheets, I would say, maybe once a week, once a fortnight. Uh, uh, or you can use this technique of yoga called Sauchna, which is about cleansing the body, uh, cleansing your space to try to get a better night's sleep. So tidy your room, clean your sheets more than once a year, clean your body, have a nice shower before bed, ease your mind, switch off devices, clean your thoughts, get rid of negativity and cleanse your breath, which is just doing breathing exercises. And I would add brush your teeth as well. So there's a routine you can do to help sleep. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Mama Can has brought you up very well to be a clean and healthy boy. <laughs> Thank you Once so a week, much. at least. Absolutely, <laughs> I know. Right.